All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Dead Eagle Politics. We are um, glad to have Armando back from Peru. He's been away for a month, so um, we're finally able to have him back and do a podcast. We also have Ernesto returning, our original, coming back after a very long hiatus. We appreciate him being here. And um, we have a special guest with us today, Bill Boswell. I'm going to go ahead and let, uh, let Bill say hello to everybody. He's our guest today. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Thank no you doubt. so much for being here. So um, today we're just going to jump right into it. I'm not very talented with intros or anything witty, so we're just going to just go right into it. Um, basically, with the ha election having just passed, us having COVID, everything going on, Christmas, the holidays, filing taxes, we've all just kind of forgotten about the immigration situation at the border. Um, we really like the new bow and tag that the Biden administration has put on it by calling them. Now they're not kids in cages anymore. They're children in migrant overflow facilities and so somehow that makes it better when it's the same buildings and the same things are happening and literally nothing's changed at the border whatsoever but um either way it's got a new name <laughs> um as we know right now i was tracking a a group that was coming up the last i heard anything definitive was in like mid-february and i believe they had gotten to honduras and it was eight to ten thousand and then now as they're coming up, they're, they're getting closer to the United States. It's estimated to be about 10,000. They've broken off into like um, smaller groups, you know, more separated groups, which A, makes them hard to track, but B, also is more unsafe for them because migrant caravans actually provided a bit of safety. They didn't have to depend on coyotes and different things to get them through these countries. And just by mass numbers, that, pre that provided a certain level of safety. Um, Either way, there's 10,000 headed here now. Um, we know that nothing has changed at the border. We don't know what these, these 10,000 people, what they comprise. Are they, are they kids? Are they families? Are they young working age men? We don't, we don't know who they are. Um, we just know that they're coming here looking for a better life. Um, that being said, um, I, Bill is actually um, a resident of California, so he has a lot of like knowledge and experience on the southern border. He also works with children. He's just got a lot of experience there. So I am really interested to his, he, hear his take because unlike myself and Ernesto, well, uh, Ernesto, you probably see a lot now too. You're in Arizona because that's a border too. So that's, oh. that's cool. Yeah, you. But you know, you and me, Armando, we, we see immigration, but we see it through the Caribbean and, you know, our side over here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what do you guys think? You know, right now, like I said, there are 10,000 people headed to the border. What is going to happen to these people? What should happen to these people? What, what are we going to do with this? Um, I'll let whoever wants to jump in with that go. Well, uh, since you called me out, I'll jump in. Uh, this is Bill. Uh, so I, I own a construction company on the Mexican border with California. And uh, so I have a lot of experience with um, uh, black market labor, I guess you could say. Uh, I also recently just took on a role as a teacher. I teach uh, green tech, uh, sustainable construction in a local charter school. And uh, a lot of my students are immigrants, uh, both illegal and legal. So yeah, I, I'm pretty spun up on, on the situation. And uh, before we started recording, uh, Armando was talking a lot about the um, political football that immigration is. And I really see that a lot in California. Um, <clears throat> gosh, I don't, I, I'm bad with dates, but when uh, Jerry Brown uh, uh, was rerunning against a woman named uh, Meg Whitman, I believe her name was. Uh, she was running for the Republicans. He, of course, is a Democrat. One of her main campaign promises was a guest worker program. And one of Jerry Brown's main campaign promises was amnesty for people here illegally. So Brown soundly defeated Meg and went on to assume the governorship here, and not a goddamn thing changed. Uh, the Democrats hold sway in California. 
they uh, hold all the cards. And yet, with all that supposed left-leaning, liberal, uh, humanitarian, um, uh, what's the word I want to use, rhetoric, uh, nothing ever gets done on this issue. St and here's the reason. It's economic. It's economic. California runs on black market labor. California runs on an unending stream of immigrants. So nobody's going to fuck with that flow. And this is always a subject that a Democratic uh, um, hopeful can use as an issue to stir up the base. Hey, those evil Republicans want to keep you know, your people down, my people down. We got to fight that, right? And everybody gets all uh, all bent out of shape and uh, votes them back in and nothing gets done. <clears throat> it's the same situation decade after decade. And it's really, when you look at it from a humanitarian standpoint, yeah. I mean, these are human beings that are coming here to this country to live the dream that this country puts out there coming here for a better life coming here to work hard and succeed and despite all odds many of them do but here's the thing <clears throat> there's so many uh hurdles in their way around the legality of it that i mean generation after generation people can be kept in this like quasi legal state and not fully integrated into society and not fully able to actualize the American dream. It's real, and this is all for political reasons. It's for political reasons first, economic reasons second. But when you boil it all down, it's manipulating and exploiting people for gain. And that's fucking bullshit. With that all, shut up. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <clears throat> I couldn't agree more. That's one of the main problems for me with when you hear people talk about their reasons why they don't want people to come here, they're, well, they're criminals, they're rapists, they're yada, yada, yada. First of all, in any large group of people, those 10,000 people guaranteed there's some rapists in that group. There is. You know why? Because it's 10,000 fucking people. It doesn't matter. I, you take 10,000 people from anywhere, Detroit, Calgary, it doesn't matter where they're from, 10,000 people, you're going to have some rapists. That's just like a law of statistics. You know what I mean? But by and large, these people, they're not different than anybody else. They're just coming here. They, they're, if, if they were into crime, they'd stay in Honduras and, and El Salvador. That shit's a gangster's paradise. They're coming here because they want to have a better life, because they want to, you know, have the American dream. And so you hear people villainize them. You hear people say, you know, that they're bad people and that they need to do, we need to do all this vetting and all this stuff. And what vetting do you need to do on a young mother with like a two-year-old and a, and a, and a, and a five-year-old? What? What betting do you need to do on her? I don't really think it's necessary, but I feel like others have things to say. So, um, bada 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 bing, bing, who wants to speak? Armando or Ernesto, what's up? I was just, oh, go ahead. Or you want to go first? No, uh, I was going to say, um, you, you didn't get to speak last time, so. Oh. Um, look, Beth, I totally agree with you. The majority of people, like in the caravan, are good people, law-abiding citizens. There are people that are trying to achieve the American dream, trying to better their future and stuff. But here's the thing. There's a legal process. If my parents were able to do it, so can they. I'm, look, my parents came from, from Venezuela and Nicaragua, poor ass fucking countries. And they did it through the legal process. They did the paperwork. They studied their asses off to get the, the visa scholarship. And they did it. So if they can, so can they. So fuck them. They, should, they, they shouldn't be cutting in line, um, jumping the border when my parents had to work their asses off. And there's so, the United States offers a variety of ways of, of trying to gain that citizenship. My girlfriend, who's Mexican, she did it through a legal process. See, and, and, and here's the thing. So if you're coming, there's lots of different kinds of immigrants, like there's asylum seekers, there's economic immigrants, there's people, you know, who just, uh, expats, you know, people that just want to travel and live in different places that don't have any situation going on back home. There's all sorts of immigrants. And if you're an asylum seeker, 
the actual legal way, the right way to do it is actually to present yourself at our border. That's that's how you get asylum through the United States. So we're giving these people very mixed messages because that that is, as far as I knew, if you're an asylum seeker, and that is the reason that you are seeking amnesty, or, or I don't know if that's the word, I'm sorry, you're seeking to come to the United States or whatever, that's how you do it. And I mean, I hear what you're saying, you know, your family- Wait, you're here- talking about, you're talking about asylum seekers or the people from the Caribbean? Because well, those, these people from these people from the Caribbean are coming from, I think, as south as Guatemala. I mean, no, I'm sorry, Honduras. Um, I think they may be coming from even. They may be coming. They're definitely coming from even more south because the last I heard, when they hit Honduras, is when like everybody was kind of like, "Oh fuck," you know what I mean? Really worrying about it. So they definitely came from more south than Honduras, even. You know what I mean? Like I'm not. I I, I wish I knew where the caravan originated, and I do apologize for that, but. I just know once it hit Honduras is when it really started to, at least in my opinion, or at least to me, take hold in the media, you know, where they started to or whatever, um, do that. Oh, and, and one last thought. Mexico has a big cartel problem. Nobody, Bill, Bill didn't mention this and, and neither did you, uh, Beth. Um, Mexico has a really big cartel problem and their government still hasn't like been able to fix this this problem that they have and not only that but liberals don't like to talk about this because it's not convenient for them mexico is a lot tougher in their southern border with guatemala than we are we're soft we're soft compared to those mexican border uh, uh, patrol um, officers they're violent as hell so well, yeah well that i mean but they do also abuse people's human rights you know we don't want to we are definitely not a nation that wants to abuse people. See, we don't we don't want to model ourselves up after Mexico. I mean, I'm not knocking Mexico, but we definitely don't want to be Mexico. I don't think. Um, and it was the Democrats. It was the Democrats who built the cages. Let's not forget that. And Obama deported more people than Trump. So it's funny how liberals. Uh, and no, and that's that. No, and that is a one hundred percent truth. Deportations were at an all time low during the Trump administration. That is an absolute fact. Trump deported less people than Obama did in administration. Far before. less. That, far that, less. Absolute fact, and I, I will not deny that. But my question, I guess, to you is: so I'm I'm taking it that you don't want the caravan to come here, like you don't. Absolutely not. Okay. Wh- why not? Can I ask why? Because no, uh, like like you said you know there's a, there's going to be a large percentage of people who come from cartel businesses who um, who are violent criminals who i don't know rapists like you said you had mentioned okay well let me ask okay, if, but there's, so if, if, if if there's like a, a really like good betting process and sure they can come in but i don't know how that betting process would how long it would take or anything like that but he- the thing like right now the united states actually needs these people we're ha- experiencing like a baby bust where we're not reproduce we're not reproducing at what they call replacement level which is which is the amount of babies you need to have to keep your population stable and steady americans are not reproducing they're not having kids and if they are having kids they're not having kids in big numbers anymore they're not having five six kids anymore they have one kid they have two kids it's a lot of people how many people do you know personal friends that are choosing not to have kids i know plenty you know what i mean and it wasn't like that back then yeah. of people who were just choosing not to have kids immigrants come here they have kids they provide us with people by and large statistically most immigrants come here and succeed they do well they're good people they they enrich our country i i don't even understand the argument of not wanting them to come here because no, they can come here, but come here through a legal process. At the end of the day, that's my that's my that's my argument. Come here through a legal process. If they can do it legally, then sure. Then you know. Okay. Anybody else well, want to go? Armando. Yeah, Armando. We haven't heard from you yet. Armando. <laughs> El Puerto Ligueño. <laughs> 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 I mean, um, again, yeah, I believe that um, obviously anybody who wants to come here, it should be through um, legal reasons, which was why, um, like, I don't know if you guys remember, it was pretty recent, actually, it was the year 2015, 2016, when Obama took out the whole um, wet foot, dry foot policy. Oh, God, you know, yeah. You know, like, I, I know, I, 
and you know, I, I have a lot of I have a lot of Cuban friends, you know, so I feel bad actually saying this, but you know, obviously they were enraged, you know, when that happened. But you know, at the same time, you know, if we're if we're gonna talk about that, we need to improve our, you know immigration system then we got to get rid of the loopholes that was one of the loopholes you know like um, people were able to just come in on a boat touch t- touch sand and all of a sudden you know you're you're here you know you, you cut ahead uh, of everyone else who you know has been in the process of trying to do it legally so you know that's where that gets politicized right there you know that's where that's when they separate from treating it you know like it should be a human issue to a political issue you know if we're really going to talk about improving our system then we need to get rid of the loopholes and you know that was one and um yeah again you know i'm all for everything being done legally it's just, uh, it's the correct way you know there has to be like a better betting process i think though because like i don't know if that's really what is missing because i mean if Obviously, with a bunch of people coming over, I believe most of them are good people and most of them are trying to do things the right way. Um, but um, there's always going to be a few that, you know, leak through the cracks and make everybody else look bad. And um, that right there, um, that right there is something that does need to be corrected. Um, we don't have a perfect um immigration system, you know, and yeah. I think as a first world country, we should be better. I really think that there's no excuse. We really should be better. But by you better, know. what do you mean? Uh, better vetting process, get rid of all the loopholes and, you know, all the all the ways that, you know, people can come in through this country, like, illegally or cutting ahead of those who have, like, been in the process of doing it legally for a long time. Because exactly. Thank it, you. Does, it, it takes a while. Like, I think... Yeah. Um, What's my understanding is um, like if you're let's say if somebody is married to a U.S. citizen, you got to be with them two years before you become a resident and then three to four to five before you're eligible to become a citizen. And, you know, if and for people who have different situations, it could take even longer. So, again, like um, we unfortunately have a system where a lot of people could cut in line and get ahead of those who have been doing it the right way. And then the people who have been doing it correct are still waiting, you know, to yeah, like exactly. Beth. That's exactly what I said. What do you what are and, your thoughts on that? Beth? And no, as a first world country, I, I think we should be better. No, no, I do actually want to touch on something that he did say, which was wet foot, dry foot. I agree. It was an unfair policy. It made sense, you know, due to communism and all that. But really, in 1996, maybe not so much. But, but, and (laughs) the main reason I don't like it is because Cubans took that and were like, "Oh well, my people and my people did it the right way." What? what, Why? Because you got to sand, and the other people had to cross a river. What? Like, like, uh, no, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so. wet foot dry fit contributed to some of the elitism that cubans had and so and, and some of the, the them feeling special separate and different so um i was sad to see it go i and don't get me wrong we all you me or ernesto we all lived in south florida you know if you're haitian you could get on a boat you could walk all the way into lauder hill mall it doesn't matter they're gonna send you back whereas if you're cuban all you had to do was get your foot right right you know just stand up in the water and you're good yeah, yeah. wet foot dry foot special with yeah, special it was, treatment. Mm-hmm, it was a racist policy. It would definitely favored Cubans. Uh, I mean, it was designed for Cubans. But you get know what I'm saying. It made it made it made a situation where you have tons it discriminated of people- against others. That's what it did. You know, I mean, yeah. it welcomed them, but it discriminated against others that weren't Cuban. You know, like right. they had it to made, get rid of that. No one else from the Caribbean was welcome, but Cubans were. Uh, you know, it it, it wasn't very. Well, I mean. Yeah, but Haiti didn't go through like the same type of history that Cuba went through, like the revolution and the, the dictatorship and stuff like that. So we got to look at, we got we to gotta look at that too. But for example, Venezuela went through that and they, they, they never got that sort of policy. So, right, 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 right. You know, there definitely is a, a racism component to all this that, that is, that shouldn't be overlooked. Like, uh, You know, in Haiti, um, when the slaves in Haiti revolted and killed all the French uh, nationals um, and basically took over Haiti and made it Haitian for black rebel slaves, um, nobody in the international community recognized Haiti as a legitimate government. I mean, during all the... uh, South American revolutions, Haiti was kind of like a 
a layover stop for a lot of people kind of coming to and from Europe. But Haitian, uh, Haitian people have always been kind of outside the accepted international community. I love Haitian and, people. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and there's been a lot of a lot of gnarly um, political upheavals too, dictatorships. Like yeah. I remember Papa Doc and that whole nightmare. And I mean, just brutal state sponsored violence that is, you know, just shocking on every level. Yeah. But, you know, as far as like, I actually, Ernesto, you, you go, where the hell did you go, Bill? Because I don't have my picture up. One reason that I don't have my picture up is every time I express an opinion that is slightly outside the accepted norm, everybody liberals. calls me a racist. Yeah. You exactly. Know? Thanks Red to the liberals. Like, yeah, well, I mean, and here's the thing. Like, that was the whole deal with the Trump administration with his rhetoric on, on immigration is he was billed as like the king racist of, you know, the world. And everything he said was, you know, horrific racial terrorism. And you know what's funny? You guys just said some of that same shit. And you better believe that there's no, <laughs> there's no like <laughs> accusations or backlash <laughs> of racism there. But it... it so he, so anyway, I kind of went off on a little tangent here, but here's what I was thinking of when you guys were talking. Like proximity is kind of a deal here. Like um, in California, we get immigrants from all over the world. Like um, I got Persian friends, I got Korean friends, I got, I mean, name a region on the planet. And I know somebody from there that's immigrated here in this first generation. Um, and it's hard as fuck to do that. I mean, like pick up everything you've ever known and tra traipse across the world, you know, uh, get settled in a foreign land and, you know, pick up and like, you know, integrate and assimilate into a new way of life. That shit's gnarly. When we share a border with a country like Mexico, it's a lot easier, you know, basically you just got to like, you know, it's easier even than the Cubans you were talking about. You just got to find a place to cross the border, which is porous as hell. I mean, I could go cross into Mexico probably in 30 minutes if I wanted to from where I'm sitting right now, you yeah. know, illegally. Um, so we kind of get, we don't get like the, the like elite immigrants. We get opportunistic immigrants and i think that's where a lot of like people's butt hurt comes in with the like criminal element like if you're you know if you're not serious about coming to america to like make a start for yourself and your family you just want to go kind of like make a quick buck or you're part of like a criminal organization and you're smuggling humans or drugs or something yeah. it's easy as fuck to come here and and exactly. you know there's all this cover that you're afforded through the rhetoric, the political rhetoric around this issue. That I think you're right on with Ernesto. It's fucking bullshit. And Armando, you were talking about, you know, closing the loopholes and making it legit. Dude, I think like 90% of Americans of all shades, colors, cultures, or whatever are all about legal immigration. We're a nation of immigrants. We love that fucking story. But not very many of us are into illegal immigration, you know, because that circumvents that whole process, just like you all just talked about, cuts off everybody that's doing it the right way at the knees, brings in a bunch of problems that don't need to be here, um, really perverts and undermines the entire legitimacy of our government and our economic system. So what the fuck do we do? I mean, really, like I said, it's like an unholy an alliance of business interests and the, the people whose political campaigns they fund. It's good business to have a black market source of labor. It's good business to keep people off balance and oppressed and exploitable. That's the fucking deal here. Yep. And, you know, I'm a little bit softer than you, Ernesto. I know a lot of illegal immigrants. I love a lot of illegal immigrants. I'm not coming down on them like a ton of bricks because they're. Desperate. Wait, hold on. Let yeah. me ask you something. Can yeah, I ask? Yeah. You, can I just cut you off real quick? I'm Fuck sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Jump you in. love. Wait. You said you owned. Um, you own a, a construction company, right? Yes, sir. 
Oh, I know what you're going to so, ask me. Yes. Do you love illegal immigrants because they benefit your business or because you no, generally love them? I don't hire illegal immigrants in my business. Oh, you don't? No. Oh, okay. It's actually kind of risky to hire illegal immigrants because if they find out that you do, like there's like there's a lot of legalities, you know. But it's, a lot of it's super common though in Miami. Yeah, you go to Homestead, go yeah, to Homestead. Yeah. It's but it's risky. I don't know if I'd risk that if I personally own, but I don't know if I'd Well, I, I should back up. One time I did have somebody that was here illegally working for me, but he just provided me false documentation. I don't do it intentionally because I actually believe what I'm saying that we shouldn't. I, I don't want to be complicit in an exploitive, exploitive situation. You know what Makes I mean? Sense. Like I, it's kind of a moral stance on my part. That's it noble because that has to be really hard. Because I got to be honest, I, I that'd be hard. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, a lot of people I've worked with over the years have been Latino. And when I work for other people, they've been uh, uh, illegal. And people that work for me are Latino, but they're here legally. Because that's right. like, right. I mean, I want to build a strong business, not a fly by night thing. No, absolutely. So, I mean, so I think we all agree that, you know, we want it to be legal. But the thing is, is I, I feel like, it's very complicated, it's very hard, it's very difficult. These people are coming from countries that are very violent, that are very war-torn, that in a lot of instances, how, would it be fucked up if it wasn't for our influence, uh, you know, in Central America and, you know, what we, you know, our influence, especially in Nicaragua and different places, you know what I mean? Really fuck shit up over there. So, um, I don't know, I, I, I personally don't see why we can't just let them in. It's only 10,000 people and I know what you're going to say I already know exactly what you're going to say but there's going to be more Liz there's, there's going to be more as soon as they come after they come there's going to be more there's going to be more why can't we just let people in until I, I mean I guess eventually we would get full but I mean like there was a time in history you know when the doors were open to America and we just let people come here en masse you know what I mean and, and show up at Ellis Island and we just let them in you know what I mean it was no problem as long you know don't be wrong even back then they had a, a process you had a criminal record you know at ellis island you were turned away my husband his last name is actually mick andrews but it's andrews because his like great grandfather was like a horse thief or some shit and couldn't get through ellis island with with his real name so he dropped the mick and now it's andrews you know what i mean like no i'm not that's I'm not. interesting so like, you know, so like, I mean, you know, they, they had a process for everybody, you know, it's not unreasonable to say, you know, we need to make sure you don't have a record or whatever, but, and Biden, from what I understand, I have done reading, he does have a plan in, in his, in, in, the, in the works, um, that's supposed to provide a pathway to citizenship, that's supposed to make it easier. Okay, but let me ask you a question, let me ask you guys a question. So we talked about these people who are coming at the border. What about people who are already here living illegally, working and stuff? What what about those people or the dreamers, the kids, the kids that were brought here against their will and you know when they were four and now they're you know, 17 and you know you can't take that person and take them back to Mexico or El Salvador. They don't know shit about Mexico or El Salvador. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you know, like here, good luck, you know what I mean? Like, you know. So what do you guys think about that? Because if you have all of that for what, what it, for the people that are not here, what about the people that are already here? Look, if you're here- I think we're-, we're Go ahead. I think- Go ahead. Oh, oh, thank you. I think we need a, a um, legal work uh, visa <laughs> that can be retroactively applied. I mean, really what we need to do more than anything is bring people out of the shadows and do an actual inventory of who's here, why, and what their intentions are. Some people come here to make money for a few years and then go back to uh, uh, their home. Some people want to come here and stay here for the long haul and, you know, become American. It's, uh, but nobody knows now how many people are actually here illegally, what they're doing here, uh, and what their long-term goals are. And all that stuff is important if we're gonna have a coherent policy 
that helps everybody come up together. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, Oh, sorry. oh, no, go shit. No, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. We're waiting. I forgot. Go ahead. I believe in pathway to citizenship. Like, if you're here, you're a law-abiding citizen, you pay your taxes, and um, you're already well-established here in the United States, you can you can stay and be granted citizenship. Absolutely. That's some, li- that's some liberalism in the meeting right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think um, I think for the, those who have been here, pretty much like you know, again, like like was said earlier, you have people who've been here all their lives, and this is what they know, um, because they were brought here when they were very young. I think that there needs to be, it needs to be made easier. I think for those types of people to, you know, be able to become citizens, and because I think you know today, like um, it's it's still difficult. It's not that easy for everyone. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of legal issues that get in the way, a lot of hurdles. I think um, if there's something that could be done um, by this administration, um, or at least started, um, I would like to see something like that started, where you know people who have been here give them the opportunity to become citizens. Hey Armando, do you believe Puerto Rico should be a state? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That anyway. might be, you know what, man? If you go to Wait, Puerto am I, Rico, hold on. Am I getting am I getting off topic? If I am well, No, no, no. Like, I was gonna do an episode on Puerto Rico statehood. And actually I've been waiting because I wanted to ask him myself, but I like it. Let's do it. What 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 do we say? I wanna know <laughs> too. Do it. Go for it. Let's do it. All I'm gonna say is that that is basically the forever hot topic um like debate on the island. If you go there and you ask that question, you will get man like the most type of fiery debates it's, you will have ever seen it's very <laughs> divided right amongst Puerto absolutely I, literally literally 50 50 like 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 maybe yeah. one towards the other like it's that much of a hot topic conversation my thoughts on it is there's pros and cons to it um i'll give you like the the benefits of puerto rico being a territory colony or uh, commonwealth um we are we're born U.S. citizens, just born, you're automatically U.S. citizen because Puerto Rico a long time ago had an agreement with the United States where they could serve in the military. And that's where that came. That's where that comes from. So can I, can I for one second? You, do you want to know why? Do you want to know why what the little agreement he's talking about? Cuba and Puerto Rico during the Spanish-American War. After it was done, they basically sat down and talked. And they talked to Cuba and Puerto Rico. And they said, all right, guys, do you want to join the country? What do you want to do? And Cuba was like, fuck you. We want to be our own nation. We saw what happened to them. Puerto Rico was like, we want to hang with you, but not necessarily be a state. And then that's how that kind of came to pass. And they were a commonwealth. But right. go ahead, carry on. I just wanted to point that out since we brought right. up <laughs> and and within that and within that agreement um is where it also came where okay like um, Puerto Ricans can serve in the United States military and I and both grandfathers um from on my parents side like um they served and everything in the Korean War so there's history with that in itself but the thing is if you're by not being a state you can't vote in the presidential election you can vote in the primaries. But the trade-off is you don't pay the federal taxes. And um, at the same time, you can be a U.S. citizen and live in any part of the country you want. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's kind of like, that's kind of nice, you know, in that Damn. sense. You know? I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. Puerto but, Ricans don't pay I, federal uh, taxes. We don't pay the federal, because we're not a state, so we don't pay the federal tax. They also oh, have no, vo- no voice in Congress. And that nope. is a huge thing. And that is why they got fucked over after Hurricane Maria and if they would have had a, a real voice in Congress, then they, you know, uh, that's one of the benefits to becoming a state because you got to bring up yep. the reasons to become a state too. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, basically, yeah, like um, that that's the, that's basically you know the 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 thing. Of course, becoming a state, like you said, you know, provides us a voice in the government and all of that stuff. We can vote in the presidential elections. You know, our voice can be heard. Um, I guess the downside to it is is that we lose our flag. We lose, like, I don't know, our nationality, not our ethnicity, but nationality. We're no yeah. longer, like, we can't represent ourselves in the Olympics anymore. We can't represent yes. ourselves as a country anymore. So, you know, that's because of things like that, 
it's such a hot topic discussion that will go on for who knows how long. Politicians for years, anytime it's election season in Puerto Rico, always, you know, dangle that little carrot over the voters. Yeah. You got to vote for me because I'm going to make it that it's a state or no, this, that. And it's like the same thing over and over again. Yeah, if, I were, if I were Puerto Rican, I wouldn't be able to make a decision. I feel like there's really good pros and cons on both sides. Yeah. It's hard. Seriously. It's really hard. Hey, guys, can we talk about the carrot that gets dangled every election season in America around uh, immigration? Because, I mean, that's really, really kind of the linchpin for me of why everything's so fucked up. Yeah. Like, the Democrats every cycle get away with making all these bullshit promises that they never keep. And it's like Lucy holding that football for Charlie Brown. You know, he runs down, she pulls it out of the way, he falls on his ass, and he keeps doing that again and again and again. It's like, when are people going to learn that the Democrats are not their friends on this issue, that the Democrats are just using them as pawns? That's exactly. really like what I want to know. And that's exactly what they do to the Africans, African-Americans. We're going to give you um, welfare. We're going to give you this. Oh, you got to keep voting for us. We're going to keep giving you this, that, this. Keep having babies. Keep having a, a single mom of six, seven in the African-American community receiving all those welfare. And who do they vote for? Democrats. That's how the Democrats stay in power, just by giving. Instead of like, hey, fuck you, start working, start bettering yourself, and you're going to become, become successful. But no, they, they, they rely and depend on the on the on the on on government programs and stuff like that. So why is, and they end up voting for Democrats? It's insane. I, it's getting to the point where they're not even giving that much anymore. They're just telling them they're gonna give now for the vote, and then you know, yeah. then when they don't get, oh no, you screwed us over, you lied to us, and everything like um because that's that political game, you know, where like um <laughs> we'll tell you what you want to hear to get your vote, continue to tell you what you want to hear, but then not do anything, you know. So that's. <laughs> That's that's what they go through. Like, look, I believe in help. I believe in help, but I don't believe in handouts. There's a difference, mm -hmm. right? Are on the we're on the same page, right? Absolutely, and that's you know that's my I echo those feelings particularly with welfare because like I think that that's another um uh, thing there that has a lot of loopholes that people basically lie about not being able to work or lie about not being able to make money for whatever reasons. And you have a lot of people who use that system, take advantage of it. Welfare started off as something that was supposed to be good. It started off as something that was supposed to help Ass give a struggling family a start. Assistance. Yeah, yeah give you exactly. some system to you know help you get back on your feet. It started off as something good. And then what happened was is that over the years, that was another one of those things that people began finding out ways to take advantage of it and use it to their benefit. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, so yeah, I agree with that. You know, there's there's a lot of things with regards to, you know, unfortunately what the Democrats are using. I And I say this because, you know, even though I am a Democrat, I also reserve the right to criticize my own party when I feel they're incorrect. And I do think that with a lot of things, they have been you know, kind of sort of in the wrong. And I think that's part of the reason why you have a bit of a civil war within the Democrat Party itself. And um, a lot of people kind of splitting away from it, you know, and being yeah. more progressive minded as opposed to, you know, like, yeah, it's it's not a perfect I, system. Beth is that is dying to say something. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, she was she actually had her head in her hands when you were talking, Ernesto. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just blowing my mind because I personally believe that the welfare queen is a myth, if you will. Not a myth. I know there are there are welfare queens. I know them. I've met them. They exist. Um, but I think that people really have the wrong idea of who is a welfare recipient in this country. Most well most welfare recipients in America are white. And um, most more white people, that's because there's more white people. But if you look at the percentages, black people, the black, the African American community are responsible for more welfare. I didn't think you were going to catch that, but okay, fine. You, you caught it. Fine. If we go by percentage by race, yes, by and large, African Americans are a very large consumer of um, welfare programs. But we could also argue that that is due to so many things that uh, institutional racism, 
um, discrimination in housing, discrimination in jobs, discrimination in college admissions. There's so I'm not I'm not saying that any discrimination. Black it's 2021. The 60s are no longer here. We're no longer we're way past that. Come on. No, no, th that's absolutely true. We, we are we are past that. But the thing is, those generational holdbacks, everything is related you can only get as far as your parents got. You know what I mean? That's that's the difference between privilege and disadvantage. Privilege is, you know, having, you know, a two-parent home. Privilege is, you know, living in a safe, clean neighborhood. Privilege is, you know, um, you know, having having parents who, who you know are home at night. Privilege is not having to watch younger sisters. There's so many or brothers or sisters. Okay, I get all that. So you're gonna blame all of that to the system instead of blaming perhaps the culture. Maybe they gotta like realize that damn, we gotta fix ourselves. We gotta no. find the importance of having a father in the household, have the importance of of teaching our kids to behave when they come into contact with law enforcement, teach them um, the importance of education, of manners, of being polite. You gotta fix yourself in order to fix the system. You know, not blaming everything to the system is it's a typical liberal thing. So. I just no, think it's wrong. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think we should blame things to the system. It is 2021, and there are people. You. This is 2021. This is America. We are all responsible for who we are, who we become. We all have the same opportunities, the same choices. You know. That's this. You know. Whatever. However, everyone starts at a different starting point, and you can't ignore that. You can't ignore that. That we're not all starting at the same place. Does that mean that that? Some people have more hurdles to jump. Does that mean it's impossible? Does that mean it can't be done? Absolutely not. It can be done. And there is personal responsibility, but it, it makes it harder. You know what I mean? And everything that's harder, you're going to have fewer people who make it to the finish line, I, I guess, is, is the way that I see it. I don't blame the system. I don't, I don't, I just don't believe that we should be demonizing people as if they're in a, in a state of being poor because of default of their own character or something that that, it, that it's that, that the fact that they're you know not that that's not a factor but i don't know i mean i just don't i get what you're saying i hear what you're saying i do you know but i at the same time i think that we need to recognize the hurdles that people have against them i don't know if i'm alone in that if anybody else wants to pick up there i don't know <laughs> uh, you know i'll actually i'll actually jump in on that too um we uh so Ernesto, I'm with you on the on the um, self determination tip. Um, I think that we choose who we are, and we prove that with our actions. Um, you know, I have a nickname online in Facebook groups. It's Bootstraps Bill because I'm always telling everybody to put themselves up by their bootstraps. And I mean that's. What I the story, Ernesto. They call him Boots. the true story. They call him Bootstrap Bill in the goddamn groups because of him telling people to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. Go ahead. So, so I'm all down with that. I mean, what you were saying about like, dude, you're choosing to be fucked up. I agree with that. I'm a former drug addict and alcoholic that's sober 19 years. It used to be a real piece of shit. And, you know, one of the things I'm most proud of in my life now is I'm not, you know, and there was a lot of bootstraps ass work around that, let me tell you. So, yeah, and, you know, and that's how I was raised too. both my parents are, you know, entrepreneurs. It's like, if you want it, you fucking do it. However, one thing that I really um, am conscious of, you know, as an American and as somebody that, that, uh, likes to study history is the um, extreme levels of racial terrorism that African Americans have suffered in this country. I mean, like, you know, it's not just, hey, we all kind of got here the same way with the same opportunities and some people suck and some people don't. I mean, right up to like recent, you know, history, right up in people alive today's lifespan i mean the official position of america on black people was it's okay to fucking murder you if we want to you know like 
things like uh, Black Wall Street, like the Tulsa riots are kind of an, an illustration of what I'm talking about. Like, here's a bunch of black people that came out of the Jim Crow era South and started to succeed, pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, like we're talking about, made this community that's vibrant, that's working, that's self-sustainable. And then a bunch of white people come and burn it the fuck down. And there's no recourse. There's no recourse for the victims of this crime. It's just like, fuck you. We don't recognize you because you're black. So, you know, 400 years of that kind of shit. I mean, there's really not. I mean, it's almost like um, black America today is, is PTSD from, you know, being black in America to the point where a lot of forward motion isn't impossible. I'll never say impossible. It's just a lot harder than it needs to be. So there's my, there's my uh, uh, take on the situation. Yeah, they're PTSD because if, um, if the American government, if politicians are telling black people, hey, you're oppressed, America hates you, this is a racist ass country you think they're, they're gonna wanna like succeed in life by, by you telling them and convincing them that we're such a racist ass country, police officers hate you? You see, this is called brainwashing. Well, you know, that, that, and that's, a, that's actually that police officer thing is a super valid point. Um, police shootings are like 10% of what they were, you know, two decades ago. Thank this you. thing, I mean, police are actually doing a fucking amazing job getting control of this shit. But Thank to you. hear the media, like, you walk out your door if you're black, it's 50-50, you're going to get shot by the first cop you see. You know, and, and that narrative <laughs> and that manipulation of the, of the, um, the fabric of our society is irresponsible and fucking exactly. dishonest. Yes. Absolutely. I totally 100% wholeheartedly agree with you. And it's, it's unfortunate well, that so liberals can't that understand kind of, this. So that kind of brings me back around to my question, though. It's like, when the fuck are people going to get tired of being manipulated by the media and by the politicians into these bullshit, like... Uh, ideas, these bullshit tropes that then become self-fulfilling yeah. prophecies. You brought that up about feeling duped or whatever. Um, my big thing that I've been bitching about for the past, like, I don't know, month on the internet is Biden in the 2K versus 1400 scenario. No, I am not stupid. Yes, I do understand that we were trying to get $2,000 passed and that it couldn't get passed. They could only get a 600. Biden said he was going to get us the 2000. What he meant was he was going to supplement the original, the amount, the 600 with 1400, make it 2000. I get it. It's still fucking word trickery. I'm not going to go into all the details. And so, you know, I, you know, I express that. And then we're not getting the 15 an hour minimum wage. And we may or may not be getting only 10K in student loan forgiveness. And all these things that, you know, he campaigned on. And now it's like, but, 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 oh, you didn't read the fine print. You didn't read the fine print. You didn't understand it. You're stupid. Whatever the reason is, it's not what you thought it was going to be. And the bottom line is it's your fault for not understanding. And, you know, that kind of, <clears throat> that whole mentality, it is kind of starting to make me upset. And it is because... I, for the past two presidential cycles, have voted with the Democrats for a candidate that I did not support, that I did not want. I did not want Hillary Clinton. I did not pick her. She was not my choice. I did not want Joe Biden. I did not pick him. He was not my choice. But I voted with the party. Obviously, Hillary lost. Biden is one. I get it. It's only been a month. But already, I feel as a progressive, as you can tell by other leading progressives are, are saying similar things, AOC and other Sanders, you know, that... Uh, the campaign promises are not being kept. We're not, it, it, and, and it's almost like, even if you just say that, just saying that or even thinking that makes you a disloyal piece of shit as far as moderate Democrats are concerned. And you know, that to me, it's like, here we are again, where you're putting progressives in this corner, telling us that we need to just stop asking for shit and be thankful for crumbs. And I, I, I don't know. I, I am starting to wonder, I mean, am I ever going to vote Republican? I don't know. Today I was saying a bunch of shit about how I was going to vote DeSantis because I was happy about how he handled the pandemic. But I mean, y'all see Wait, me trying to try to podcast. Uh, Beth, podcast. if you don't mind me asking, Beth, if you don't mind me asking you, because I know you're half black, right? 
I'm like 30 you... something percent black, but go All ahead. All right. So, you know, you being a half black person, do you truly feel oppressed? Do you feel do you truly feel racism in this country? Honestly. Um, I feel that I am afforded a certain I feel that I don't go through the same struggles as say like a black girl who's of a very dark complexion who has a more African sounding name and more African sounding features. My name is Elizabeth. Um, I'm not going to tell you my middle name, but it's white as shit. And you guys know what my <laughs> last name is. Okay. So um, yeah. I don't have African features. I can pass. I'm mixed. So I, I can pass for other races. I don't go through the, I, I, I am afforded a certain level of privilege due to the American concept of passing. Okay. And look, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're saying that there is white privilege then, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But don't you think every racial group has their own privileges? For example, black people can say the most racist shit and get away with it. Absolutely. And I agree with that too. I think that certain things that, that I, you see it in groups all the time. You see it in groups all the time. So it's totally cool to make fun of like white people and white shit. That shit is funny. It's hilarious. We do it in movies. We do yeah. it everywhere. But no, no, no. I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just, I'm, I'm go with me. Okay. But if you were to flip those very same things around and do it to, about a black person or to a black person or whatever, it would be absolute fucking pandemonium. And I, and I 100% agree with you that there is a double standard there in regards to what we will tolerate yeah. depending yeah. on what side it's coming from. I totally agree there, 100%. Cool. 100%. Amanda? What, if I feel oppressed? Yeah. <laughs> nah, you know, we're living in South Florida, so obviously, you know, we don't encounter <laughs> like, you know, like um, the same type of situations that maybe say, you know, that you hear African Americans talking about. But what I can say is this, just to play devil's advocate, while, you know, I've, I've been in South Florida since 2002, I can't really say that I can recall any moment I have felt oppressed or whatever, but I have, um, I have been through the south i've been to alabama i've been through mississippi and what i can tell you is that um you see and you feel how you're looked at and how mm. you're talked to you know it's 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 very you, like wait hold on before you flew to mississippi did you go with that mindset not at all because and keep in mind that i wasn't even that like um politically in tune with like okay. what was going on plus um i didn't really catch on to it until afterwards like, um, but when I looked back and I really think, you know, about, you know, those experiences, I know I was never arrested. You know, I, I didn't, you know, like do anything that would have provoked certain things, but the way you get treated, you know, like it, it that's why I would say it depends where you at, like the way you see people kind of look at you, the way you see people talk to you, it's more like, it's more embedded. It's more hidden. That's not oppression per se. Um, because obviously, you know, being oppressed is more like, you know, that's like a whole nother level right there. Exactly. But, um, wait, wait, but, wait. You do, but you do notice how people treat you, like depending on where you are, you know, if you're like not from there and if you kind of sort of. OK, so I get way, that. But it's never occurred to you that maybe they're looking at you like that for other reasons and not really racial, maybe because they thought you were an asshole. I mean, there's so many fat. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, not no, an it's just, no, it's just an example. It's just an example. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many factors. There's so many. I'm not going to assume that just because a white person looked at me in a wrong way, that it's because of racial tension, racial issues. Maybe he just didn't like how my hair was, my, my receding hairline. I don't know. It could be, <laughs> well, it could be I mean, anything, really. Well, one thing that I can say, um, because I do also you know, know a couple people from you know states like that, and the way those people, the, the things that are said that maybe you or I might consider like, okay, that is offensive or whatever might be to us certain things like um, to them, the way they talk about other races or other people, that's not really offensive. That's just normal to them. So perception is also, you know, something right there. Maybe to us, we might think that they're being racist, but you know, maybe to them, that's not being racist. Maybe to them, that's just, you know, normal, you know, normal talk. And, lines do get blurred and all that stuff there but again i was a youngster at that time man i was like 17 i can't tell everything in detail but no do i in my current situation where i'm at right now no i don't feel oppressed um i can't say i do 
um, I'm fortunate to not have gone through like anything to feel that way. You know, I um, came on a little late. I got my career a little late. I got my living situation a little late. You know, I got myself stable a little late. Um, but that was mostly my own doing. Um, I can say that um, I, I'm proud to say that um, I did work hard. There were obstacles in my way, but I don't think they were really racial uh, oppression. There was just more uh, tough career I chose. And um, not everybody makes it through. But um, no, I don't feel racially oppressed. I'm actually very thankful to run into everybody who mostly treats me good. Okay, so hold on. So I've been waiting to say this. I've been dying because it just, it hit me I like like click. Okay, so you're asking, do I feel oppressed? And I was thinking, thinking, thinking. Armando was talking. It hit me. Do you know what I have, Ernesto? You know what I got? I got grocery store anxiety. You want to know what grocery store anxiety? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna explain to you what grocery store anxiety is. I have grocery store anxiety because number one, I'm an overweight bitch. And I'm one of those people, I have a lot, I, no, listen, li you hear me out, when you hear the whole picture, like, it's all going to make sense in, like, five seconds, okay? So, I'm an overweight bitch, right? I have a family, all my family likes snacks, like, they love snacks, that's, like, their thing, right? So, I buy a lot of fucking food, right? Like, I'm that lady that's, like, coming through with, like, the cart that's, like, all up to here, you know what I mean? Like, you know, right? I don't stop much, that's what I do. Wait for it, okay? When I get to the front... I start thinking to myself, like, oh my God, this is a welfare basket deluxe. Like it has like egos and fucking syrup and fucking, you know, I just, you know, all the like welfare delicacies, like food, it's like in there, just full of shit. Sounds so, great. Right? <laughs> so, so I get nervous. I get nervous every time I'm up at the register. So you know what I do? I take out my credit card. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. If I'm lying, I'm crying and one of my fucking kids gets struck dead. Y'all, I swear to God, this is the truth. I get up in the line. I take my credit card out, right? I look at the people behind me. They're white. They always are because this is Northwest Florida. They, they always are. So I, so I look behind me. They're white. I take my card. I hold it like this on my arm so that they can see I'm paying with, like, they can see the Visa MasterCard logo. That is fucking crazy that I'm that. But why? Why? Because we're perpetuated the welfare queen. They see me coming with my fake eyelashes and my motherfucking extensions. And they're like, okay, this bitch and her fucking big welfare fucking cart. You know what I mean? They're, they're like, okay, you know, her, her diamond uh, cheap ass earrings. You know what I mean? They, they know what time it is. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to say, do I feel oppressed? No, but I feel I have great. I have grocery store anxiety. Now you all know that's, that, that's out there. A Bill, form of discrimination? Yeah. What happens? A form of discrimination. It's a form of psychological warfare perpetuated on people like Ernesto who believe in the wealth. <laughs> hey, it's not. It's not like a, it's not just me. A lot of people agree with me on this subject. So it's just a problem, like um, Armando had said. But hey, I got a question. How come, how come you guys vote for the Democrats, man? Like you guys sound like a bunch of Republicans to me. Hey, I Bill, mean, have, um, you ever, have you ever felt oppressed? <laughs> you know, actually, uh, let's see. Have I? Um, I felt in danger um, from, like, power structures, both in this country and outside. But in my day-to-day, -day, no. Fuck no. I, um, you know, I'm... I'm a, I'm, I'm poor white trash, you know, I'm not like a silver spoon white. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I like understand enough about how like the rich white people work that I can, that the proximity I have to that hegemony affords me enough fucking uh, juice. To, I've never really felt like I had anything in my way other than my own, you know, drive. Oh. that's what's up y'all that's what's up well i think i'm gonna cut this one because i think we've all gone like a super long time god <laughs> damn it i want to know why these guys aren't republicans lesser of two evils actually i this is an interesting question i want to pose it to ernesto specifically because ernesto's i, I again i thought and i could be wrong you're actually a progressive. Like behind it all, aren't you a progressive? You are, aren't you? I'm a centrist. 
You're a centrist. Okay. Okay. I thought you were a, like a like a closeted prog progressive or whatever, but okay. <laughs> no, that's me, dude. That's me as we found out today. <laughs> so you guys, well, Elizabeth, Armando, you, you two are liberals, right? And Bill, you're conservative, correct? No, I'm a centrist too. I'm a centrist okay. too. A like I, I don't ever know who the fuck to vote for. I hate Armando, you're liberal, right? I'm reluctant to call myself all the way liberal because there's a lot of things that I see that, you know, quote unquote, like liberals promote that I'm not necessarily all the way with, but I'm left leaning. You know what I mean? Like, I believe I believe, you know, like there's things I'm liberal about and there's things maybe I'm slightly more conservative about. But um, well, if I was to pick, I'm, I'm, I'm left. I lean left, but not like all the way left. It's just kind of like a slight, lean, you know. Well, since you're left leaning, can I ask you something? Yeah. Does Mr. Potato Head really offend you? Oh, I think, Lord. It's silly. <laughs> I think it's silly. He never had a fucking penis. I think penis, it's silly. Man. I, think I, don't, I don't know. You know, you know, if I wanted to say, if I wanted to say something, you know, like, uh, you know, but at the, you know, uh, let me, let's, it's interesting. And I thought we would touch on this earlier, but before we wrap up, we could definitely say a little something. I, when I heard it, I remember it was in passing, right? And I was like, Oh, whatever. You know, it took me a while to really process. And then, you know, I went back and I was like, oh, really? So first it was that. And then, of course, the whole Dr. Seuss thing, you know, followed shortly after. Um, I think it's silly. Honestly, my personal opinion, I think it's silly. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't bother me. But um, it's not it's a result of the free market. If you think about it, private companies making their decisions based on, you know, like whatever they deem is appropriate to them or not. It's like, you know, hey, it goes, what can you do? Yeah, man? But, but here's the thing about that. Like these, they're listening to the most unhinged freaking people out there when they're making these, these decisions. decisions. Yeah. It's like people on Twitter have some sort of meltdown and all of a sudden it's dictating what Disney's <coughs> doing, what, you know, the Seuss legacies doing really, it's like, dude, who are these people they're listening to and why are they listening to them? I mean, really, it's like, like this whole like cancel culture thing has been ratcheted up to this fever pitch to where yeah. like literally anybody says anything. And if the word racism is in the sentence, everybody freaks the fuck out. And it's just, I actually, I actually agree. The Seuss books have like some pretty effects of racist overtones so do the fucking disney movies guess what they were from fucking 40 50 60 fucking years ago that's just how people rolled then really what the deal is is like who the fuck do these people think they are that think that they get to make the choice if we should view these things for us you know if we want to check out the disney movie that's our choice it's not some freaking but her college student on twitter's choice you know, that, I agree. That was... I agree. See, I mean... but I think that sometimes these things are hijacked and it makes it as if it's a thing when it's not. Like, for example, I swear to you, I promise, I do not know one person of color who is offended by Aunt Jemima or Uncle Ben. Thank you. Nobody. Thank you. I don't know anybody who's bothered by it. We know why our faces is on the delicious food, okay? We under we understand that. We know why the delicious food always has our face. So, you know, <laughs> we, we, we get that. So, um, you know, um, I, I literally, but, but again, it's the company trying to strike out ahead of outrage that hasn't even happened yet, but they have to be afraid that it will happen. Um, with the Dr. Seuss thing, I think it was, it was totally racist. Doc, I guess, and um, one of the members from the Dead Eagle Politics Group actually pointed this out, Cheyenne, she said that, um, she was telling me that Dr. Seuss himself, I guess, used to write like actually super racist shit, like in his spare time and like poetry and just all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's a, there's like no question that like Dr. Seuss was like a racist guy, indeed. Um, but you know, the, 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 what happened was they were basically, they're like five or six outdated books that they don't even really print that much anymore that nobody reads and they've just decided to not print them anymore. Um, I think that's a smart move. You know what I mean? I think, I think that's a smart move to move ahead of, you know, just say, Hey, this is not good. Let's, let's just pull this off. Um, it does go too far though. You know, they want to, they want to change everything. They want to take everything away. I, you know, I'm not offended by most things, a lot of things, you know, so, um, it's definitely gone too far, but I also think a lot of times it's hyped up 
to be something that literally nobody cares about, like Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben. Nobody cares. Right. I um I I actually agree with that. I honestly think that a lot of the things that like you know you hear about people being offended i think a lot of it is like because you know you ask yourself do i know anybody who's offended by that does anybody here know anybody who's offended by that a lot of times the answer is no because these aren't really regular conversations that come up and it's not like (laughs) and it's not like people are waking up right every morning saying what am i going to be offended by today the only thing i'm going to ask is with regards to the aunt jemima thing um because obviously like i mean yeah i know you we get it we know what it represents right but um how come there wasn't an outrage on this like i don't know how long has it been around years 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 ago how decades come- so why so why has why now i guess is my question like because liberals that's, that's, because it's it. liberals that are promoting it now it's the liberals but I know, that are doing it but i know a lot of liberals i know a lot of liberals in south florida and i swear to god i've never heard that come up Never. And it's funny. It's funny, though, because Aunt Jemima, when I see Aunt Jemima, I see Black representation. This is a good thing. It shows that Black people, you know, they're represented with products, with well-known products. Aunt Jemima is not just any other but typical syrup. Better. It's a good-ass syrup. <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, I prefer Log Cabin, but I like Aunt Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as a redneck, I'm offended by Log Cabin. <laughs> That is funny because that is totally your ancestry, right, Bill? Like you were like from Alaska, and literally like like the, the flannel. Oh man, yeah, like, like, <laughs> like <laughs> but uh, like all those old West movies with that dude that's just basically a beard with like some like leaves and shit in it. That's where my people come from. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. I, I well, well, let, let you me, see my point though, right? Like I see black really representation. Right? Yeah. I don't know if the argument is that it's a it's her working as a slave. Is that was that what they what I read that people are trying it's to the, say? It's, that pres- it's the mammy archetype, uh, the the black domestic oh. servant. She could be a slave. She could be post. But and that and that was where I was confused. I don't necessarily see. I don't. It doesn't look like she's a slave to me. Like a, a servant. Like yeah. yes. I and she's smiling. Her. But um, I didn't. That was the only thing that oh, I was Jesus confused about. Christ. I'm sorry. Did he just ask if she was smiling? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I think she is smiling. Actually, she is know? smiling. Isn't she? <laughs> I think she is. Wait, why is that funny? <laughs> it, because for, for me, you know, because I you read so much, right? That oh, like it depicts like a like an African like American like slave woman or something like that. Yeah, but a slave like, wouldn't be smiling. But, but that's what I like. Is it? Is it really a slave or is it just a like a, you know, a black servant, you know, which is different than a slave. You know, I mean, she was getting paid for her work. Right. You know, cooking for whomever she was hired for. Like, that's why I laugh, because I'm just like when you ask yourself these questions, like, do people really go and like find reasons to like pick something they're going to be like offended about or something? I don't know. It's just funny to me. Okay. 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 But okay. So let me ask you a question. I'm uh, a, like 30%, 40%, half black, whatever you want to call it. None of us are like black, right? Like fully black. So do we even have the right to tell black people what they have the right to be offended over? Like, you know what I mean? Like, for example, okay, every a lot of people here are Latin, okay? The, the, the Latin, if you look at movies, every time there's a Latin woman cast, she either plays the sexy hot wit, the sexy hot wife, the maid, whatever, whatever. She the never, maid is common. <laughs> maid is not, she never, she very rarely plays the fucking executive or the fucking strong female fucking governmental figure or some bullshit like that. that that's never the case. Maybe so, she wasn't built for that role. You never know. No, but what I'm saying is like you said, you said Aunt Jemima is black representation. So there's yeah. somebody out there right now who's going to say, well, that's Latino representation right there. Is that what is that the representation that we want? Is that the representation that black people want? Is that it, it to be, or, you know? I don't I don't understand. The, like the fact the fact that that Latina got a Hollywood uh, role in a in a movie shows a lot. That shows a lot of progress in the in the Hispanic community here in this country. What I'll say is, um, if I saw like a number of I guess members in the African community like showing that. I guess that symbol upsets them, then that's one thing. But being honest with you, I 
as many African Americans I know, I haven't met one, not one yet that ever like even when this came out that ever even discussed with me like oh yeah that symbol is so this that it represents slavery like um i haven't met one african-american that has told me they're offended by you know that i guess syrup bottle you know that's where i kind of draw the line if i see it's something that does offend certain you know like um, african-americans and that's where i kind of like all right but if I don't see any African American offended by something, then I'll ask. Like, okay, so yeah. what's the big I deal mean, we about We had this? Beth. We, we had Beth right here. Why don't you ask her right now? As a black person, do you do you feel offended when you see an Aunt Jemima syrup bottle? Personally, no, because I understand it. I'm, I'm gonna. I mean, if you want me to, do you want me to be shitty? The reason Aunt Jemima's on the fucking pancake bottle is because black people make better food and they make delicious pancakes. And that's why they're on the, that's why she's on the bottle. Okay. So I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, that's my, when I see Aunt Jemima and I see that bottle and that's what I see, that's what I interpret. I, um, you know, I, I, you know, whatever. Well, Maybe some of my log cabin, but that's for rednecks. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love Vlog so, Cabin. So that's that was actually interesting because it's like a positive yeah. feeling yeah. Yeah, Jemima uh bottle. Which is cool. And you know what? Like actually I've heard that from a lot of people in these so-called like racist symbols that need to be canceled. They're like, I don't know what the fucking big deal is, but those six woke college students that stayed up all night, you know, on Twitter trying to make this into a big fucking deal, still got it canceled, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's the problem to me is like we're listening to this like minority of idiocy and it's like driving the boat for the country. I well, mean, see, like, like remember what happened? Mob like, mentality. People can't, people, it starts with those six kids and sometimes it's just those yep. kids kids but other times it starts with those six kids and in six weeks it's gone viral and half the country is pissed off yeah. well and, and half the country's afraid to not call everything you know out and like say they're offended by it because they don't want people to say they're a racist you know i mean that's the, that's really what the virtue signaling component of this is it's like, oh shit, these six woke college kids said something's racist. I better say it's racist too, or everybody's gonna think I'm a racist. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Multiply yeah. that by 340 fucking million people, and next thing you know, you can't watch Disney movies anymore. <laughs> so, do you guys think cancel culture is gonna continue? Like, just get worse? I think cancel culture has been around a lot longer than we actually know. I mean, um, I posted in the group, you know, my first experience with cancel culture, you know, I mean, this goes back way before. I mean, I posted the story about Muhammad Ali, you know, how he was canceled because of his stance uh, over the Vietnam War, joining the Nation of Islam, changing his name, his pro- pro-Black rhetoric, you know, like, um, the cancel culture is gonna, has been around. I think it's going to continue to be around. It's just a matter of how much worse it's going to get. Okay, so I feel like we're we're all we all have common ground in this this topic, right? We're all against cancel culture, right? Yes, I mean, okay. yes, no. I think it's- like for example, okay, okay, let's talk about um like Marilyn Manson, right? Like people wanted to cancel him in the '90s because of his um hardcore rock and you know the devils whatever, whatever. His image. Yeah. Were- all right, but. Now he's a motherfucking rapist and all these other things. So it's like, you know, do is it okay to cancel someone because okay, or Jared from Subway, we find out that they like to diddle kids. You know, I'm gonna cancel that guy. Am I gonna cancel Subway? No, I'm gonna cancel the guy. Yes. So I guess I don't agree with cancel culture. Never mind. I don't even know where I was going with that. So go ahead. Yeah. Did you guys hear about Lola Bunny? Oh my <laughs> God, that is just appalling. That is I can't believe it. That is absolutely insane. What happened? I don't understand. All right, they in the new Space Jam. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry I jumped in. Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so they used to draw Lola Bunny with breasts, like like human breasts, not bunny breasts. You know, she was like <laughs> big old boobs. And, and now the butt. they draw her, they draw her like with no boobs whatsoever. And yeah. yeah. So she can't have like a feminine 
looking body because that's offensive apparently oh my god well and what about the avatars mm -hmm. on like facebook and stuff they're asexual mm -hmm. like they're the same yeah. wait like, so what's I'm up there's a question though about cancel culture because this one i didn't really understand and i feel like you guys would know more about it than i do so i don't watch that the mandalorian thing like i don't i don't watch that i'm not like a part of that that star trek show the mandalorian or whatever but the lady <laughs> I saw that she could the Gina Carano or whatever she got canceled because she said something in relation to the Holocaust and Jewish people. Oh, I yeah, said, oh, she didn't. She didn't say shit. What she said was right now in this country, people are treating people with different opinions like the Nazis treated the Jews in, in uh, 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 Third Reich Germany. That's not like Holocaust denial. That's not anti-Semitic. That's like some lady saying, hey, we're getting out of control here. And you know what happened? She got fucking fired from, yeah, Disney, from Disney because yeah. she made that comparison. Well, see, so I read what she said and I was like, okay, I don't see it as yeah. bad. But then I was thinking to myself, is this missing context? And I'm not understanding it because it's missing context, but you just explained it and it doesn't, we're canceling people over the stupidest things. Or here's an example. I'll go ahead and say it. I loved the show Roseanne growing up. It was like one of my favorite shows. Mm -hmm. I loved it. When she came back on the air, I was mm -hmm. like beyond thrilled. I was like in front of the TV yeah. every week. I haven't I haven't tuned on the TV like because a, t a show came on, like to actually watch it live on an airing. And I don't even know how many years, but I was running to the TV every week to see the new Roseanne. And then she came out and made those comments against Valerie Jarrett and said that uh, she looked like Planet of the Apes or some shit or something. And they like totally canceled her. And I was like pissed about it. I was like, this is crap. Like I love Roseanne, like what is happening? So, I mean, we see people getting canceled all the time over the dumbest shit. And the thing I didn't get is I was like, okay, I don't watch The Mandalorian. I could give two fucks that they took this lady, G lady Gina Carano off. I don't watch it, I don't care. But from what I understand, the people who do watch it, they fucking love the show. So why are you destroying a show that you like with an actress that you like, because she said one thing that you don't, I don't know. I, I found the whole thing interesting. Well, well, actually it was more than one thing. Like she had a history of tweeting stuff that was like not the party line of Disney. Like she said that, that uh, COVID wasn't as big of a deal as everybody wants to make it out to be. Uh, I think she said something about, a, a, anyway, she just kind of ran through a couple like, right wingish talking points on her Twitter feed. And so when she did that last one that said, you know, oh my gosh, mention Nazis and Jews, they just like, that was the final straw. They came down on her like a ton of bricks and canceled her. But it was a long time coming because she was saying things that those six woke college kids that stay up all night on Twitter flipping out wouldn't agree with. What I want to know is when the fuck are we going to stop listening to those six dumbass <laughs> Yeah. Like nobody fucking cares. Obviously nobody cares. Let's just get over it. Yeah. You want to wrap it up? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Ernesto. I apologize. Go ahead. No, I was just, I was just going to ask if you want to wrap it up. No, definitely. I was getting ready to say it's been a great freaking podcast. This has been awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I it's just been awesome. And um, I don't know if you guys wanted to say, you know, goodbye or whatever. <laughs> Till next time. Thanks for having me. Thanks for As having always, me. <laughs> love you guys. Thanks for love being you. here. Bye. Take care. Love you, Liz. Bye bye. Love you.